Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm Vinny B and I'm currently building a backhoe attachment that I designed for my subcompact tractor. Once I'm done testing the machine, you'll be able to buy these plans on my website for only 50 bucks. On that last episode, I coupled the base with my tractor, built the outriggers, added the pivot thing swingy and danced. Today I'm building the boom and the stick. Yeah, these parts. Starting the boom, I'm using my trusty, uh, hopefully still straight, called roll bar as a base. Oh, and if you're wondering how it is to film myself building stuff, well, it's a lot of do-overs, because sometimes the camera is out of focus, or the battery is dead, or like right now, the footage is out of frame. Yeah, it happens more often than you think. <laughs> ah, better the second time around. One good general tip when working with sheet metal or laser cut parts, assume the parts will be worn. During design, add bands or well perpendicular pieces to get everything straight. And while building, clamp everything down. The warpness is more obvious with thinner and longer parts. Here the game plan is to follow the contour of that side plate. I never done that before, so I'm hoping that with the torch and a little bit of elbow grease, I'll be able to slowly match that curve. moments later and I fucked it up yay I assure you uh, it's the first time it happened to me I really don't know what went wrong I mean I was in the mood things were getting pretty hot in here and uh, yeah all of a sudden uh, it bowed down by itself so hey no 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 it's not you it's yeah that's my fault it's all on me so as we say around here let's wipe ourselves off and start over it doesn't translate very well. I was aiming for that smooth curve, so that's why bending the part with my hydraulic press was not my first option. Maybe if I make a bunch of small bends, it will mimic that low finish I was so eager to get. I overbend the flat bar and that's okay, yeah, once clamped, everything will look perfect. I added the small 4x4 tube slice to help position the top side. Yeah, you'll see in a minute. The only drawback of having these is when feeding the hydraulic hoses inside the boom. They will probably catch or get stuck on these tube slice. So I'm adding a generous chamfer, hoping that will help. Oh, ho, ho. oh pretty! Like every other project, at this stage I'm only tacking the parts together, because I don't know if down the road I'll have to take it apart. Then I bend the underskin, exactly like I did the top one, with a bunch of small bends. This time I underbend it, but again it's not a problem, because of clamps. You have no idea what you're capable of fixing or doing with clamps. You don't want to launch the part you're grinding into the stratosphere while drinking coffee? The lamps. You want to transform your light into a grinding machine, which is probably not such a good idea? The lamps. Tired of hearing your dog bark? The lamps. They talk too much? The lamps. She said no, not tonight. The lamps. Here I'm making the bottom skin for the boom. Oh 
I almost reach the smallest distance from the band to the edge that I can do on my press. So much that the protractor won't fit on the part anymore. I made the underskin longer, in case I got things wrong with the band's location. And to make it fit, I just need to cut the extra material. And now it's too short. Well done, Vinny. But it can be fixed with, you know the word, a bunch of welding passes, exactly. One of the last part I need to fabricate is the bottom pivot which will be the point of connection between the boom and the pivot thing swingy. Using the unmastered technique of preheating the housing and freezing the bushing, once again I'll try to press fit some hardened bushings inside the shaft, but only after I'll completely weld the boom. To grease the bushings, I'm putting a zerk, and since that zerk will be embedded inside the boom, I bolted before welding the pivot. Uh, <laughs> oh. That's that's interesting. Okay, pre-bolting doesn't work. I think you should. Uh... I'm gonna put a notch. Yes, exactly. Okay, the fun game begins of trying to bolt the zerk back on the shaft. Uh, maybe with a socket wrench? Uh, nope. A magnet? Uh, nah, definitely not. The pliers? Yes! Excellent. Since all the skins were tagged in, it was time to put the gussets. And yes, uh, you probably had spotted it already, but there's a three quarter of an inch gap. So if we go back five minutes ago, we all remember that I messed up and warped the first skin, and unfortunately, I use what was left from the initial 20 feet long flat bar I purchased to do the other skins. But if you don't tell anyone, cause I won't, once I fix it, nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? To get the hydraulic hoses through the boom, I made some cutouts. And now I needed to put some reinforcement plates around the holes. I made sure to remove all sharp edges and I double check after welding. Whoa, come on, buddy. Not, not you. Not so fast. This is really not appropriate. These are the mounts for the hydraulic cylinders. Their alignment is very crucial. Well, for any pivot points, the alignment is crucial if you want everything to fit and function properly. You'll see later on what I mean. And something cool is how well it fits with the bent flat bar. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Once I done, let's flip it. And it's heavier than you might think. Click, click. With all the parts tacked, let's fully weld the boom. Ah, yeah, that's right. It's time once again to uh, try to press fit bushings. But this time as a backup plan, I'll use a half an inch ultra to hack. As a press because uh, you might remember but the last time i tried the frozen bushing heated housing technique to do the press fit it didn't go as planned hey. 
and I took the time to repair my torch so it should work better than last time. <sighs> it's the same shit as last time, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The bushing being freezed is about two tau under, which is roughly the same size as the housing. Guys, if you know what I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments. Well, I guess I do have to uh, understand and get better at this procedure because I don't master it, not even a little bit. Damn it. Whew. Not what I pictured in my mind at all. By the way, I even bend the ultra by pulling on it? What? Excellent. Are you ready for round two? Are you? All right, so that one went smoothly. Oh, wait, this is not the right red. Ah, oh, no, it is. Okay, boom done. Now for a stick. And this one is easier to put together. Oh. Remember the warp edge assumption oh. I mentioned at the beginning of this video? Assume the parts will be warped. So again, I machine a bunch of bushings and oh yeah, people let me know that they appreciate it. In my last episode, my celebrating dance. So in this one, I made a catchy song. And a quarter. 41 and a quarter, 41 and a quarter. 41 and a quarter, 41 and a quarter. Catchy, right? Let me know if you want me to send you the lyrics to sing along the song, cause that was a short version and the full one is a 15 pager. Done, it's time for final assembly. Here's another example of do over because I'm making YouTube videos and building stuff. Here, the camera was out of focus, so now it's out and now it's in again. Sure. 
Remember when I mentioned how crucial the alignment for the cylinder mounts was? Well, here I think it's a case of misalignment of the two plates. So maybe a few tau off on these plates gave me that 1.8 offset at the end of the cylinder. If I barely pry on the rod, it fits but in the long term and once the cylinder is completely retracted, yeah, it might be rough on the seals and yeah, I just don't want that. So I just need to cut a small slice and if you don't tell anyone, nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? Oops, it appears that after welding, the boot sidewalls at the extremity closed a little bit, just enough that the stick won't fit in. And no, it's not just the thickness of the paint, it's metal, it doesn't fit. So with a coupling nut and a 5.8 bolt, I pried open the sidewalls. And voila! Since this cylinder shared the same mount as the boom cylinder, I was worried that I have oh. the same misalignment problem. Yeah, it's right in the middle. Fits perfectly. Whew, what a relief. I asked my son for some help because the cutout I made in the boom was a bit too small for four adolescent hoses and their sleeves. Yep, can't wait to change one of these holes if one of them splits. That's gonna be fun. Was he believing it? <laughs> Believe in yourself or what is me? Mais dans le bac. Dans le bac, il va y aller. Merci. Devant la caméra. Oh non! Je l'avais. Ça va? The brown. All right. Ready to go. Ready to rock. Alright, it seems that I forgot to film the boom and stick in action, so I'm gonna leave you with this footage. I know, the bucket magically appeared, but I assure you, the bucket build will be for the next episode. Although it looks like I'm almost done with this build, in fact, I'm far from it. Uh, remember in part 2, how many red flags I got from the hydraulic spool valve? Well, the biggest red flag is still to come. I know, at the moment, I look like a total dickhead operating this machine, but it's because the stick and the bucket hoses are mixed up. And yep, my muscle memory was struggling to reverse those movements. And don't forget the plans should or are available to buy, link below. And thanks again to Conceptromech, my partner for this build. If you're looking for a job, they have some. They're looking for engineers, designers and machinists. So I put the link downstairs and see you on part 4. Uh, maybe it's gonna be the final one. Who knows?